Georgie down here for Bucks' big return and it's chilly conditions and the D's are on at the same time. So I've got one eye on the KO, but I'm pumped to see how the great man goes. There's not a lot that would keep you from watching the Melbourne Football Club at the MCG, but Nathan Buckley's first game in two decades, that's probably the one thing that would get you up and about. How do you reckon the champion, the Brownlow medalist, will go today? So we've heard rumours that he's going to sit at full forward, which we're excited to watch. Uh, just lead up, double back, apply yourself. He'll be right. He's yeah. a seasoned professional. He is, he is. But I do worry, first game back in two decades. We know he keeps himself fit, but even the fittest of operators, it's a different football, it's a different type of fitness, football fitness. And when it's been a rainy day, tough Soft conditions, I just hope that his body can hold up. I'm hoping that, yeah, he'll be right. We're back in the big bucks in, but that has been the talk of the town. Yes, pretty. Oh, lovely. Come on! I'm never washing this hand again. Never. Never in all my days. All over him. Yeah, of course. So, um, there's murmurs and rumours that Bucks has done his hammy. Uh, we're going to have to go and investigate. A couple thousand people here, uh, all to see the great man, and he's pinged his string in about five minutes. <laughs> this is not good. We're going to go down Dr. Peter Larkin style and, um, and, and see what's happened, see what's transpired. I'm going to go see the commissioner, <laughs> Dr. Brown. All right, so Roger and I have tracked down the commissioner. Commissioner, it's a great day, it's a great turnout, but we need to confirm the news on N Buckley's hamstring. Uh, unfortunately, it's not good. Oh, no. It's, oh, it's no. grim. Uh, nine minutes into the first quarter. No. Torn hamstring. Off the bone, we're talking. He can't come back out later. Off the bone. Completely oh. gone. Uh, full rupture. May need an operation. Um, so you sort of wonder where to from here, but... <laughs> Nathan got stuck back into contributing because he wanted to contribute to the Neil Madonna Footy Club and yeah. he's helping out with the coaching now. Uh, Alg, Alga, I think his name is, is the head coach. A little bit concerned that Bucks might be trying to undermine him. Really? Somebody's speech at quarter time and you half are kidding time. Me. But in fairness to Bucks, somebody's mm -hmm. advice has worked pretty well because the boys, they've got themselves back into the game. They and have. It's funny coincidence that since Bucks went off the ground, they actually start <laughs> The tide is turning for the lads. Hopefully, Bucks can whip him home for us. Absolutely. He is just a god amongst Ben, isn't he? He's the best. Ben, he's the best. He gives us Bucks. heaps and some. Bucks, line through him, done for the day. Bucks, hamstring. Oh, do you reckon? Dear, dear, dear. Look, sub in Brownie. Almost. Imagine yeah. subbing in the big round of. Hi, guys. Pump for today? Yeah. Make sure you subscribe, Pad and Dunn. Yeah! Oh, look at him! Halfway through the third, bit of a ball burst, and Neil Madanum are up by 14 points. But it's anyone's game at the moment. They're lifting here, all without Nathan Buckley. And the noise is deafening. Whenever they slot one through, the joint is going berserk. It's an unreal atmosphere here. And I think Neil Madanum might just about be home if they get another couple on the board. And now I'm just watching a random local footy game in Warrigal. <laughs> we are. Buckley's off and we wouldn't know any of the other 44 blokes running around out there. It is genuine local footy. Do you guys remember in Nil though? We, we, we found out some of the names. Maybe we need to find out Bonesy. some of the cult heroes. Yeah, Bonesy! Bonesy was good last year. For we now. need to find out. There'll never be another Bonesy, but we need to find the closest thing to it. I think Bonesy signed by footy. <laughs> it, sounds, it sounds a bit like your grandma, doesn't it? Nil Madonna. <laughs> it's like you read it in the obituary one day. Rest in peace, Nil Madonna. Gone but never, never forgotten, forgiven in our hearts. Back and forth. <laughs> Who are we playing? Uh, Shamo, have you got any Katani. of their phone numbers Katani. yet? Katani. Uh -huh. Have you got any phone numbers? Sounds like we're the host of the World Cup. <laughs> <laughs> Katani have just answered back. It's back to four points. Nerves here down at Nil Madanum. We need a sealer. We need to finish this off. First win in two years. Come on, boys. <laughs> Nil 
Nilma Darnum. I've been saying that wrong. <laughs> Nilma Darnum. What have you been saying? Nil, oh, Nil Nilma Darum. Darum at one point. <laughs> yeah. He said Nary Warren at one point. <laughs> I said Warrigal. <laughs> it's on my head. I'm not leading it's for it. It's always going to explode. Nilma haven't won a game in two years. And this kick will put them in front by 10 with about 10 minutes to go. Does not get any bigger than this. Do you get it? No, no. Come on, mate. Get out of here. Oh, he sliced at it, but it's here. Yeah! Come on. What a shoot, Abby! Come on! Yeah! Yes! Come on! Jeffrey scores a tie! Scores a tie here in the last! Some kids have a tap. Bucks, roller coaster of emotions today. Talk us through how it went, mate. Well, it went how it was always going to go. It ended with me with a soft tissue injury, which I would have liked to have played more than nine minutes. But um, yeah, I was. Um, yeah, that's what happens when you get a fifty-year-old man trying to trying to feel like he's thirty again. It just doesn't happen. The fairy tale didn't quite come to fruition. Nah. Do you think if you were out there, it would have been a bit of a different story if you lasted all four quarters? Well, if I did, yeah, well, if we did. The boys scored pretty well, but yeah, I would have liked to have had a bit more um, say in what happened on the field. But they had a crack. Like, they were ahead all day until the last sort of 10, 15 minutes where uh, Katani got ahead. But the fairy tales, uh, <laughs> they didn't come true, mate, unfortunately. You went straight into coach mode once you went off. How inspiring was the last sort of, the last half that the boys put on? Oh, they had a real crack. But it's like, it's, it's like watching it in slow motion. They've had a lot of these sort of narrow defeats. And they had a real crack, and you could tell the devastation on the boys' faces. Mm. Yeah, they they worked bloody hard, but they, they haven't got a lot of reward. So, yeah, it was unfortunate. And lastly, back what's it meant for you to get back involved in community football and see it at the grassroots level like this? Oh, it's been awesome. Yeah, I, I was able to come down on Thursday night training for four or five hours and pizzas and beers you know, <laughs> after, after training, which was good. But um, yeah, I, like I. I was at Collingwood really quick after through Port Adelaide. I didn't really have one sort of country club. Moved around a lot as a kid, but had you know, had a, had the idea of being in them and out of them. But it's been so long, so to to get the feel, all the volunteers, all the people that contribute to it, it's it's been awesome to come back and, and get that feel. Would have loved to have been able to sing the song with them at the end. So yeah, nice. rather than listening. Yeah, 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 we're in the change rooms here and the oppo yeah. sing their song, <laughs> which is like the ultimate song in the world. That's right. Sort of thing. So, yeah, no, it's um, near enough, even quite good enough, but it was, yeah, it was awesome to be a part of it.